morning and welcome to the chat on Newsday Amarillo and News Channel 10-2. I'm David Lovejoy. Good morning, everybody. I'm Rhonda Lawner. And I'm Chuckalicious, Chuck Williams. Chuck, you're going to have to adjust your microphone. It's buried there. Can't hear you. Uh, oh, lung cancer is by far the leading cause of cancer death among all Americans. More than breast cancer, colon, and prostate cancers combined. And while statistics are a reminder of the severity of the disease, advances in lung cancer treatments are helping change the outcome or providing much needed help for those diagnosed. Small cell lung cancer is a rare and aggressive form of lung cancer that is even more challenging to treat with long-term success. Uh, today, joining us this morning to talk a little bit about this subject, we've got Dr. Jacob Sands and Maida. 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 Yeah. And pronounce your last name for our butcher. Manjamelli. Manjamelli. And Dr. <laughs> Sands here to talk about how we can navigate this desperate, desperate world of cancer. Welcome, both of you. How are y'all doing today? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Dr. Sands, why is lung cancer so deadly? And can non-smokers get lung cancer? Yeah, we often say that anyone with lungs can get lung cancer. And so in individuals that have never smoked, that's much more commonly non-small cell lung cancer. And I just briefly make the point that for those people, getting DNA testing of the tumors, um, so not the kind of DNA that gets passed along, but mutations that cause it to become a lung cancer, getting that kind of biomarker testing of the DNA is extremely important because there are targeted therapies. And we've had huge advances over the last 15 years in treating these kinds of targetable mutations in the cancers. Small cell lung cancer is overwhelmingly individuals with a substantial smoking history and tends to be a more aggressive kind of a lung cancer. And this is where the advances in treatment of this more aggressive type of cancer are that much more important. So is the, what is the difference between the, the small cell and the non-small cell lung cancer? Is, the, is it the aggressiveness? Well, this goes back to early on in, in cancer uh, um, identification and treatment. The pathologist, when looking at the cancer under a microscope, sees small cells and called that small cell lung cancer, and the larger cells are non-small cell lung cancer. Now, at this time, we have subtypes of those. In non-small cell lung cancer, we now have uh, subtypes of that adenocarcinoma squamous and others. We also have the DNA testing that I mentioned, that the mutations that caused it to turn into a cancer. In small cell lung cancer, we also now have some advances that are happening within pathology in uh, ways of describing this more specifically that might have implications into the treatments. And that's something for ongoing research in these possible subtypes of small cell lung cancer. Can you tell us about the breakthrough new treatment for small cell lung cancer and how this new treatment, is, well, can make a difference in these patients? Yeah, this is exciting. We're seeing this is an immunotherapy drug. And when um, we talk about the first line treatment, so people who have metastatic small cell lung cancer, now the standard is to get chemotherapy and immunotherapy. And immunotherapy, just to make an analogy, immunotherapy is kind of like swinging the bat for a home run. It's swinging as hard as you can, and in many cases it doesn't connect. But when it does, it's a home run, it wins the game, it's national headlines, and we, uh, we now have people that are years out with these immunotherapy drugs. But when the cancer grows again, that has really been where the scenario gets far more challenging. And this new class of immunotherapy drugs is another swing of the bat for a home run. And what this, what this class of drugs does is they're, they're called T-cell engagers, T-cells being immune cells. It grabs those T cells, the immune cells, grabs the cancer cells, pulls them together, which creates that immune response. And so then the, the immune cells are working like an army going out and finding the cancer and fighting the cancer. And this, this treatment can work for years. And in clinical trials, I've seen this working for years. Uh, and we now have an approved drug in the class as well. So it's exciting to now see this move out into standard of care use. Ma'am, you were diagnosed with cancer in 2018 at the age of 68. Uh, tell us uh, your story. Tell us about your journey. Oh, I, yeah, with pleasure. So I was a smoker, 
Um, but my oncologist refused to let me blame myself because, as Dr. Sand says, anyone with lungs can get lung cancer. No one can prove it was because of my smoking. At any rate, I had extensive. There was a tumor in my liver and then the lung tumor. I was treated with chemotherapy and then radiation. Immunotherapy hadn't been approved yet for small cell lung cancer, and since then, I've been in remission, meaning the tumor in my liver is gone, and the tumor in my lung has shrunk remarkably. I'm so excited about this new drug, because if and when my tumor starts to get bigger or I have metastases, you know, in other words, spreading of the cancer, mm -hmm. I know that there's something out there that's going to help me keep living a long life. So from your perspective as a patient, how important is this research? I mean, you, you said that you, you have some hope. Uh, what else do you feel this, this offers? Um, it, well, it offers a longer life, which in the past, if you were diagnosed with small cell lung cancer, especially extensive, your life expectancy might be six months to a, to a year, even with chemotherapy. So here I am six years later with the knowledge that if I need a better drug or a second line of defense, I'm going, going to have it. Um, I also am excited about several new clinical trials. And in a clinical trial, you're not a guinea pig. You're getting a great standard of care plus the possibility of a future drug. Um, if you have to have lung cancer, this is the time to have it. So, Dr. But, Sands, which patients living with small cell lung cancer should talk to their doctors about this new research? Yeah, it's important to, to talk with your doctors. Now, there are general questions to ask your doctors about stage and what your treatments are and what the goal of that treatment is and such. But I think meeting with a specialist to know what drugs are available in clinical trials is also really important. That doesn't mean that trials are right for everybody. Every individual needs to be um, evaluated individually to see is there a trial that seems like the best option for that individual. Uh, but knowing the landscape is important. And as I've said, we now have a drug FDA approved. This class of drugs I've used for years up to this point. And so patients have been getting the drugs of the future today. And that exists now, and there are various other compounds currently in trials that are also worth knowing about. So meeting with a specialist and just knowing the landscape I think is really important. Uh, you know, that's uh, the thing about it. Most people uh, think 20 years ago, if someone said you had lung cancer, it was time to start making a range. That, that was the honest fact. I can remember a family member was diagnosed and that, that it was just like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. And the, the technology and the breakthrough and the research now, people live through it. And it's made a huge difference, uh, uh, courtesy of the Lung Found Cancer Foundation of America. Uh, doctor, where can we go for more information on this new treatment? So LS, uh, uh, lcfamerica.org, so the Lung Cancer Foundation of America, is a website where there's a lot more information, and so you can look uh, on there to answer a lot of your questions or even know what questions to ask about all kinds of aspects of lung cancer. Yeah, it is livable. You can live through it now. It's not a death sentence anymore, and that's thanks to some great research and some great clinical trials. Uh, to make people's life just a little bit better. Ma'am, continued in your journey. Good luck and, and be careful. Thank you. Doctor, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you so much. For more information, uh, the Lung Cancer Foundation of America is the place you need to go. Find out how you can add more life to your life. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more chat right here on Newsday Amarillo and News Channel 10 -2.